Wait, remember Speed Racer, the next generation? Well, everyone knows Speed Racer. The whole original show is basically a meme these days. But what about when it was time to give an older property some new life? And man, in the early and mid 2000s, things were bound to get weird. Aside from that live action Speed Racer movie that is so weird it's good, it's seriously underrated, there was another direction, an animated show that would update Speed Racer into a new art style for its animation and give it the new title of The Next Generation, minus Picard. Card. It was the age of the random reboot and Speed Racer seemed like an interesting idea to try something new but familiar with. Or is it a sequel that connects to the original lore around Speed Racer that takes the series into a completely new direction? It's kind of both, I guess. Today, let's take a look at Speed Racer The Next Generation and see if it can retain that oddly weird charm the original show had, what it ended up being all about, and what happened to it. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand new- Wait, 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 wait. Uh uh. Ah. Double fringe miss. Aw, you only thought you were gonna get 25 videos this year? Look at you. You look silly. But I'm here to fix that because I'm gonna give you not only 25 videos, but I'm giving you 50 videos. I have two channels. That's two fringe misses. Each day there'll be a brand new video on both channels for 25 days. I haven't slept in months. Enjoy the content. Or don't. Speed here is the embodiment of a hopeful future racer to live up to the name of Speed. While here in the series we have a lot of plot points dealing with the original Speed Racer, and this Speed being the son of him, clearly, with him here entering a racing academy, where he will face many challenges that get in his way, whether it be from his peers or from the bad guys in the show. While the original show had some great stakes thanks to all the real danger the racers had, and more importantly that Speed was always in, this show finds a way around that with introducing the virtual world, a way to race not only in a more safe way, but where the races can be in places that don't make sense or within the world that the show establishes impossible, especially being this connected sequel-esque series to the original. Allowing the show to have a virtual world for the races to take place, it gave the creators and animators the freedom to design the races in any way they want, making the courses more dynamic, weird, or just fun to race on. The extra benefit with that is them actually not being hurt and just being pulled out of the virtual world. But there is a catch to this because the virtual world has the makeup of a computer, making it all work and run. So the world is susceptible to things like viruses or malicious attacks that can do some real damage to hurt those who are in the world at the time. I will elaborate on this whole virtual world thing in just a bit, but as far as what the show is and what it has to offer, we get a storyline that follows Speed Racer Jr., voiced by Kurt Solak, where he was originally hidden by Speed Sr. for everyone's protection from some nefarious people. As he grows up in an orphan orphanage, and the way he was raised, the things he had to go through were completely different. So when he's behind the wheel, he feels a real sense of belonging, and in a way, real freedom. Spritel, voiced by the original speed racer Peter Fernandez, and then later on Greg Abbey, is a character from the original series who was the younger brother to Speed Racer Sr., and is back here as he's the one who runs the academy, giving him a close eye to both Speed Jr. when he arrives there, as well as X Racer, voiced by Robbie Sublette, and later on Brian Taylor, with both of these characters playing into the story of Speed's family, along with Speed Racer Sr. voiced by his original self, Peter Fernandez, and then later on, Greg Abbey, having some attention put onto him as the series goes on. It's a big family affair, but there is a solid friend group here for Speed Jr. with Connor, voiced by Carter Jackson, who is the mechanic of the group and is a fanboy of the original Speed Racer, who even has their own Chum Chum, sorry, I mean Chim Chim, a robotic chimp that is a play on the non-robotic chimpanzee from the OG series. Along with them is Lucy, voiced by Sara Malesi, brings the brains to the group as well as the romantic lead for Speed, Jr. With a wider supporting cast of rival racers revving up their engines, the show tried to really take in what made the original show a classic and beloved by many, but also bring it into the modern day with technology. Let's take a deeper look into the show. Our good friend Larry Schwarz is back. If you aren't familiar, he's the one behind the now no longer existing Animation Collective, where for Nicktoons Network was a great partner in producing so many weird, interesting, and unexplainable shows, some of which we have talked about here on the channel already with stuff like Kappa Mikey and 3 Delivery, so naturally it only feels right to bring up his company's Speed Racer adaptation. Using a technique Larry calls painted CGI, the show blended 2D and 3D by creating the actual space, not just painted or 2D. 
2D backgrounds, where the main characters themselves are 2D animated. While I will get into the look of the 3D animation itself, I will give the crew and Larry credit for the passion that did go into creating the show, wanting to pay respects to the original series as well as utilize multiple animation styles to give it that next-gen feel. Mixing 2D and 3D is not an easy task as most times, especially in this era of animation, it can come out looking very jarring and be a big off-putting thing for a lot of people, including myself. Nickelodeon really pushed for the 3D look to it in general, as it was easier to produce and there is more you can do with it. But it was also cheaper to produce because of the time it took to work with it. Larry was brought in with Animation Collective to work on the series because of the nice relationship that both Nick and AC had with one another, having multiple shows running at the same time from their teams. So when there was an opportunity to not have a pitch show get picked up, but offered a show, being commissioned to make it happen for Nickelodeon, it's a big deal, especially when Larry was given the opening to create the concept of what happens in the show itself, following some guidelines, of course, as far as we know. So it was time to get to work and to play with new technology for Animation Collective and see if Speed Racer, the next generation, could be the next big hit. While I wouldn't consider myself the biggest fan of Speed Racer, I've always had fun with my time with the property in general. The original series is something to behold. It truly is a product of whatever they could do with it in terms of dubbing over it all. But even stuff like Speed Racer X, which genuinely has an even wackier story that makes the live action movie look at least more normal. And again, I think the Speed Racer live action movie is genuinely a fun time that is only aging better with time, feeling as much like a live action cartoon as possible. But for this adaptation, this 2D, 3D hybrid for Nickelodeon, it really doesn't offer a whole lot of great things, especially for the time that it came out. Now, regardless of the budget given to make a show like this, Animation Collective is not a studio, I'd say, that went for the highest quality of animation, especially with stuff like character movement. Having this level of stiffness to every character mixed in with minimal reactive movements and repeating mouth-speaking animations. It's charming in some cases where I enjoy Kappa Mikey for its mix of animation rawness with feeling more free in design, and it also just mainly being a comedy. As for 3 Delivery, the aesthetic of the show looks great, but stuff like the action can take a massive hit where it's not not really engaging the viewer. Thumb Wrestling Federation, well, it's just actual thumbs. This Double Fringe Miss is brought to you by Gamer Subs. Hi, this is just your reminder that if you really need to pick me up during the day and something that tastes great and is also not the worst thing in the world for you because there's literally nothing in it. There's nothing in it except for great flavor. There's less than a calorie per serving. There's no sugars. And if you use my code Fringe, you get 10% off. This holiday season, treat yourself right with gamer subs. Speed Racer The Next Generation struggles to really adapt this 3D look when it comes to the environmental backgrounds, feeling noticeably empty and lacking of any real detail. Something like this I can usually look past in 3D animation, but more so in the very early on days of 3D animation. Stuff that was coming out around the turn of the century, not so much shows that bleed into the 2010s. But it really is the racing itself being the most lacking part when it comes to the use of the animation style. Look, the original show is no champion of racing animation by any stretch of the imagination, but here it feels so bland and uninspired, I feel like I could look at plenty of other shows around this time that truly handled racing animation well, regardless if we look at 2D or 3D animation examples. It sadly just feels like a cheap production all around, but not for lack of anyone behind the scenes not working hard on it or having the love of the Speed Racer property, it really just seems like a budgetary issue mixed with deadlines, working with new programs unfamiliar by those using it, but that's at least at first since the second season, it had taken quite a while to come out post the first one. I get to the extent the show at first was partially a way to be this movie promotion, something that can be on the air around the same time that can hopefully push between them new viewers. But as far as what you get in the show, I feel like the story doesn't fare much better when you pit it against itself. It is this sequel series. It has a level of previous things to build off from and pave its own way forward. But having the responsibility of also being a reboot, it needs to reintroduce a a lot of main concepts that make Speed Racer Speed Racer. The story just doesn't let you figure stuff out and has some poorly fleshed out characters making Speed Racer the next generation feel a little less exciting for being the next generation. Having Speed be the original Speed Racer son is one thing. To build in a secondary character in Speed Jr.'s family being his mysterious older brother named X is just being a little too lazy with it. I hate to say that, but it just feels like taking the exact copy of the original and tweaking some of it into the 
worst things about it. The original, we have Racer X, who turns out to be Rex Racer, who is Speed's older brother. So then Speed had some kids, named his first kid X instead of Rex, and then his second kid Speed, well, that's just kind of dumb. Again, at least in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with having new characters or still having the main character be the descendant of the original Speed Racer. But you can do so much with the term of the next generation, but instead it opts for a storyline that doesn't feel like it knows what it wants. Holding on too much of what the past had and not allowing it time to breathe into something new. Characters in the supporting cast are a pretty big issue as well, and I mean that mainly with the villains of the show. Their motivations to be the bad guys, the things that they can do in and out of races, and just how they're handled. None of them felt like actual threats. The coolest villains coming in the form of these two twin drivers whose car can split into two in a race. Which, yeah, that is pretty cool. I just wish it could have been turned into something more threatening, or at least more interesting. Even looking towards the cars themselves, pretty much every car looks super bland thanks to the little detailed 3D animation. But even when looking at the Mach 6, it only does a few new things that are so randomly futuristic. And having in this whole sci-fi mix of time travel or other dimensions or portals to space, wait, what's going on here? Oh, well, yeah, that's mainly all thanks to the virtual world aspect. You know, the main thing for these races that both makes it visually interesting, but also less gripping. I love that the virtual races are offering all of these constantly changing landscapes and moving pieces, as it feels like a pretty cool idea. And visually, these were the most standout parts of the use of 3D animation in the series, feeling like the animators had a lot more fun being able to shape these realities into whatever they wanted. But as much as I liked this aspect of the show, it takes away the stakes of the races. Sure, there is a threat of being trapped in the virtual world by some bad guys, but other than that, at worst, you just get pulled out of the world and everything is okay. A reboot or next generation tagline is one thing. How they handle the legacy of the original Speed Racer is, well, less than favorable towards the character, which I have no problem where they take it. It feels more so written in a way to give us this random mystery of who Speed Jr. is the son of, and what his relationship to a racer named X is, and what's his connection to Spritel, but it all was way too obvious. And again, I'm not even the biggest fan of the property. It's just the context clues, being more obvious than finding a Blue's Clue paw print on everything. But with all of that being said, the show would have two seasons, where season two would come out nearly two years after the first season ended, and from there, take another two and a half to fully release the remaining episodes. Let's take a look into what happened in the end for the show. August 25th, 2013, Speed Racer The Next Generation would come to an end after 52 total episodes throughout its two seasons, spread across a total of six years. That's quite a lot of time in between something that relies on you finding out the story episode to episode. Season 1 had all 26 episodes come out in the span of a little over a year. But to even get a season 2 and for it to barely be around consistently? Yeah, it's sadly no wonder why this show came to an end, and it's honestly surprising a season 2 even existed if we're gonna be honest here. If there was an immediate interest that warranted a season two, you'd think it would have come out sooner than it did and less spread out than it was. I do feel that there could be something great with this property. And that's not to say that the next generation couldn't have been great or that it didn't have some good ideas or cool moments. It certainly had some. But having both this and the movie coming out as this more copacetic brand, you'd think they wouldn't be further apart than they are. One feeling like this big budget over the top anime come to life and the other feeling like something made with basic computer graphics that have little excitement majority of the time. Speed Racer is going to have another attempt at a series, this time live action for that avenue through Apple TV Plus with J.J. Abrams' bad robot at the helm. And I hope that what they do there is make a fun take on the franchise. I want the best for Speed. I like the design of the Mach 5. There is some really cool things about this franchise that I do enjoy. But the next generation, unfortunately, isn't one of those things. Getting through the show felt more like an obligation for already watching as much as I did, and I think for where we end up, it doesn't pay off, it never felt worth it. Just a swing and a miss for this adaptation. But there is a charm to the other shows and projects that the team behind this show have done. So whether it was a lack of direction, a low budget, or tight restraints from the property owners, the show was held back from being something greater. Heck, even the animators producing the second season of the show really weren't happy with how Next Generation handled the Speed Racer property, going on to make a concept that keeps the animation 2D and more in line to 
to respect the original canon of who the Speed Racer characters are, and how to bridge a gap to make more sci-fi elements work, or at least make the virtual track racing a lot more engaging. If you love the show, if you're a fan of it, I think that's great, and I do think that the way it was broadcast from the network, that they should have treated you better so that you could actually get the full story release in a way that was more cohesive. I never go into any series or media with the thought of not liking something, or to come off as overly disliking something. Sure, I haven't been this big fan of the franchise already, but I didn't enter this video with preconceived notions. I'd have rather been surprised and enjoyed it more than I did, but it just didn't click with me. Heck, it took me a few viewings of the live action movie over the years before it really clicked with me. So take that for what it's worth. And speaking of worth, your opinion. What was it on this show? Were you a fan of how this show handled the Speed Racer property? Or were you more in the field of where it wasn't for you? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I like and subscribe. Later.